excuse me, go back to the dinner controller. I can change my index here, and I can say find all dinners. Uh, where event date is greater than or equal to today. All right, well that should work. So if I come back here to our dinner controller test, uh, TDD in action, red green refactor. Woo! So I got my green. There's still some refactoring that I can do here and to tighten things up a little bit. And what this is going to allow me to do is also address a question which I hear a lot of, which is, uh, what if I have a complicated UI that has a lot of information on it, like a portal page, for instance? Uh, how do I handle that? And uh, the answer is, you, know, you can follow a pattern called the presentation model pattern, or you could use something which we call a view model. Now, if we take a look at the nerddinner.com website here, uh, you can see we do have a little bit of logic in this page. And uh, specifically, we have you know, we have the notion of RSVPs here. And if I come up here to host a dinner, we have a few other things in here that we have to show and tweak and display. We might have something in here that shows uh, a filter, for instance, for uh, swear words, if someone put in some inappropriate language, and uh, so on. So if we look at the Nerd Dinner code that is behind this site, we also see a few other things. This is the dinner controller from the nerddinner.com website. Uh, but we have uh, the notion of a constant of page size in our controller. This is a UI concern. Not a big deal. It's not a big deal at all. But uh, you know, if you want to want to kind of encapsulate this, uh, so that in the future, maybe if you add Silverlight uh, capabilities to your site, or maybe you'll have a different UI you want to plug in. Well, you can put this all in one place, and I'll show you how that works in a second. Another thing that we have in here is a quick test to see if the user is the owner of the dinner. Now, if they are, well, then we show some uh, links that they can edit or cancel their dinner. So this is now buried inside the controller, as you can see, in a couple of different places. We have one there, and we have one there, and I believe we have another one down here. So uh, I want to unhinge all that, and the way that I'm going to do that is to use a thing called a uh, presentation model or a view model. So uh, you've probably seen this before in the dinner controller that we had on near dinner previously, where we just had a different class up here. Uh, you've probably seen that in a couple examples. Where uh, you just come up here and you create a class called Dinner View Model. But I'm going to kind of uh, make this a little bit more formal. I'm going to create a class uh, right here inside of my model folder. And I will call this a Dinner View Model. There we go. So it's a brand new class. And uh, what I want to do now is I want to add some information to it so that I can then use it to display on the page. All right. Well, it's a very small beginning, but here we are. Uh, just a quick property to display a selected dinner. Uh, we have something to display an RSVP count. So if I head back over to the Nerd Dinner uh, controller here, Nerd Dinner Dinner controller, the live one, and one of the other things I want to pop in here is page size. Now the reason why this is a good idea is because now this becomes logic that is built in specifically to a presentation class. And so this is nice because you can share this again across all UIs that might access your site's back end, such as Silverlight or Flash or whatever you're going to use. So now we know that the page size should be 25, and that's great. Well, the other thing that we can do is we can have uh, this method right here encapsulated in our class, if we like, so we can reuse it everywhere. And it's a simple check. It checks if the hosted by is part of the current uh, or is equal to the current user's name. Now this uses user.identity.name, it's an I principle. It's not necessarily uh, created by HTTP context, uh, but unfortunately we don't have a controller to work with here in the view model, uh, so I'll show you what we can do. There's a way around this, but first what I'm going to do is I'm going to write uh, the method that's going to allow me to access this. Okay, well here's the code that we have, uh, just a quick boolean method to find out is the current user the owner, and I'm accessing HTTP content or context current user identity name. Now this isn't a good idea because if I test this, well this is going to fail because it's going to be null. There is no HTTP context in a testing project. But I can get around that. Uh, I can get around that by writing a method uh, or having a property up here for the current user. So I can simply type in this. And that way I can set it wherever I like. And so then I can just copy this down. There we go. And we have an ignore case. And so we're good to go with that. One of the other things I don't particularly care for is when you do go to create a new dinner, 
as you can see, this, this uh, event date is set in the future, which is good. Uh, but we also want to be able to include time in here. So we just went with uh, uh, using date and then some text for the time. Uh, so we don't have a date selector because this is really important. This is start time. Well, I think I want to separate these two out because having a date selector is very important. And working with times between the two is a little bit tough. In other words, we really want this to be something meaningful. And also, you know, it doesn't have to be a, a rigorous time. It could just be like after work or happy hour or whatever we want it to be. So what I think I'll do is I'll create the notion of a prompt in here. So what I can do is I can say, well, let's have a, let's see, yeah, have, have a date prompt. That's what we'll call it. Well, here's my current date and time prompt, and it's exactly what I want to see on the UI. And so what it can do is just uh, add, add a week to today, and then default the time until 6 p.m. So I think that works out good. Well, while I was at it, I also kind of uh, improved the way the current user property works. And what I'm doing instead now is I'm kind of doing it old school here, where I'm returning a local variable. And I'm going to default it to the HTTP current, uh, context current if it's not null. Because if it's not null, that means the website's using it and might as well default it to the name. It's time to add a little spit and polish to the default view of the site, which is the index view of the dinner controller. And if I run the site, you can see that I still have the baby blue and sort of white default template uh, look and feel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, implement here the CSS and the images that we put together for, or I should say Dave Ward and Michael uh, Dorian Bach put together for the Nerd Dinner site. And so being a good demo guy, I'm not going to make you watch me uh, build out the CSS. I am just going to drag it from the content folder of the Nerd Dinner site, and I'm going to drop it in here. And so there goes the CSS. That's exciting. And there's our Nerd image, which is pretty cool. The next thing I need to do is I need to work with the Site Master page. Now, a lot of people find it very strange that we still work with Site Masters in an MVC, and you sure can. If you look in Views and Shared, this is where uh, you have a bunch of shared stuff, which including we have a logon user uh, control, uh, an error page that we redirect folks to, and a Site Master. And this is a web form. Uh, you can do all the stuff in here that you could normally do with a web form, just can't post back. But if you have things like a, a menu control that you want to use, you sure can. Sure can. So what I want to do is replace what's in here with the site master from Nerd Dinner, and that's what I'll do. And I'm going to be bold. I'm just going to grab it, drag it, drop it, add it. Uh, it's kind of crazy. And there we are. And there it is. Up it comes. So there's a couple other views in here that I think I'll grab, and... Uh, drop them in as well. They're just shared views, and I'll say yes to all. All right. Well, let's see what we've got in here in the site master. As you can see, it's pretty basic stuff. We have links to scripts, and uh, inside here we also have a link to our production CSS, which is pretty cool. And we're rendering a login status part, a status partial. So I've got to make sure I have that, and I do. All right. Well, let's run it and see what happens. No errors yet. That's exciting. Let's see how everything looks. Now look at that. Hey, what do you know? So wow, that was pretty easy. I have to say I'm a little bit surprised. We even have the user voice feedback tag. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Okay, well now what I need to do is I need to hook up the maps. The site looks pretty good and Nerd Dinner starting to come together. So let's hook up some JavaScript and some maps. Today what I want to work with is Bing Maps and it's going to show where all the dinners are on the map. And this map's pretty interactive. It's kind of nice. Zoom in, zoom out, I went with my mouse wheel. It's kind of fun. And uh, so, yeah, let's get started. To work with Bing Maps, you can read up on the API. It's over here at MSDN. Uh, if you don't remember this long URL, you can type in Bing Maps API in your search engine, or you can just type in dev.virtualearth.net. They have all kinds of information here, and curiously, it looks like it's sorted by uh, 